Good morning. Well, we survived the night. Oh, it's cold though. We get a whole lot of sleep, but I stayed warm. <laughs> Everything's covered with ice right now. Most people do this from the outside. But there's nothing on the outside. <laughs> uh, need to wait for the car to warm up. Welcome to the Adventure Closet. I'm Liz and this is Charlie. We are two 80s and 90s kids that never lost their sense of wonder. We're all over the map, exploring wild and abandoned places, discovering rocks, geology, and history of different areas, all while living and traveling in our minivan Opal. I guess you can say our life is a mixtape of adventures. So hop in the van, hit the subscribe button, and let's go somewhere. We are in beautiful Montana. Liz is busy uh, answering your guys' comments while I'm driving, and um, got about a four hour drive before we get to our destination. So let's check out some of this beautiful scenery. It's still 19 degrees, but the roads seem fine. I'm doing the uh, legal speed limit of 80 because Montana likes to go fast. Because <laughs> it's big, it takes a long time to get to the other side. Yesterday, uh, in our last video, that you saw, we drove about 500 miles. Um, we drove over Lookout Pass uh, late in the night. Um, it's pitch black out, so there really isn't much to see. Our headlights aren't the greatest either, which I should get that fixed. I should probably buy some of those blinding LED headlights for uh, for Opal so I can see better but um, it's supposed to be a high of 24 today possible snow and uh, it is beautiful here We have to watch the uh, weather um, closely because there 
is a storm coming sometime this week in the next several episodes. It's just madness! And uh, we've never really experienced uh, Montana or I don't know where we'll be, Montana, North Dakota or Minnesota when it hits us, but uh, should be interesting. It's supposed to be a severe cold front. Um, we did okay. It was 11 degrees. I uh, said it felt like one when we woke up, but... Uh, I would agree with that. Liz would agree with that. <laughs> um, but we did okay. Uh, it took a while to defrost the opal. But, um, all in all, it was a good night. You see that little tire light indicator there? Uh, that is the way Opal talks to us nowadays. Uh, ever since our 75 mile flat tire, um, adventure in Kaleo, Utah, uh, one of our, uh, one of our TPMS sensors is bad. So just every once in a while, randomly, the, uh, light will flash and we just, we just give it up to Opal being te temperamental or just telling us hi. Um, Sometimes she's funny, like with her timing. Yeah, it, it does. It does have some some interesting timing, but it'll it'll just flash for a little bit like that and go out, and uh, then we just continue on our way. Uh, it does stay on if her tire is low, so it still works. It's just it has a quirk to it. <laughs> um, but it's it's just it's Opal's personality. It's uh, warming up now to a balmy 23 degrees, and we are about to enter Missoula, Montana. We're gonna go pick up some Harleys. We're gonna pick up some Harleys. Uh, that would be super cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they also do Polaris though, so we were actually just talking about how cool it would be to have some snowmobiles um, to. Uh, bebop around in the winter. Yeah, there's some ghost towns up here in Montana that would be amazing to snowmobile to. Yeah. I just realized that uh, we're low on gas and we have 19 miles till we're empty and it says it's 16, oh good, now 15 miles to the gas station. Um, we're on empty. The gas light's on. Opal's complaining. Her little flashing light's on. She's like, yep, yeah, you guys better make it. So, we'll let you know if we're pushing Opal or not. <laughs> uh, we've gotten it down to like seven before, but never three. Um, so. We're going to be crossing our fingers and our toes.
to go on Opal. Uh, how far until the gas station? 3.5 miles. Ooh, that's cutting there close. Yeah, just a little bit. fluctuating and that's not our mileage <laughs> that is the temperature in Fahrenheit <laughs> We can we can push her from here maybe if it's not uphill. It's still another mile. Oh jeez. on fumes just pure determination that's what she's running on i i see the <laughs> gas station oh my gosh All right, i'm keeping you guys rolling because this is bad oh i've never seen zero on distance to empty we're literally on fumes <laughs> We're gonna make it. We're gonna. I, I know we can push it from here. I yeah. see the gas station. It's a quarter mile. Your destination will be on the left. It's still a quarter mile. <laughs> Talk about coasting. Is it gonna show negative one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just gonna say this is BS, guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like gassing me, me, like adults. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. We made. <laughs> gonna die right here. I think this is one of the few times I've been happy to see a gas station where we can put money in it. <laughs> All right, we made it. <laughs> Zero miles. Opal, you're amazing. Yeah. What a van. Well, that was ridiculously close. Um, yeah, that was irresponsible of us. But it's just like when you're throwing down so many miles, like it just not gonna happen because you're stopping at the gas stations all the time, and like it feels like in your mind you think, "Oh, I don't need gas. I just got gas." But. <laughs> We made it, that's what matters. I like my trapper hat. Make fun of me if you want. I've never put 20 gallons of gas in this thing before, ever. I think that's how much she holds. That is how much she holds. <laughs> it came out to be just over 20 gallons. That was intense. That was pretty intense. <laughs> uh, I'm glad we made it. Uh, I'm glad we didn't have to push her. Now we got 351 
gallon, gallons of gas, <laughs> 351 miles of gas. So funny thing, we were going for that gas station. I don't think we would have made it. So I'm glad this gas station was here. Um, we're in Drummond, Montana. Which is a great place to buy used cows. Yeah, great place to buy used cows. They got a nice used cow lot over there. And uh, now we're gonna be back on the freeway, hopefully with less drama. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back on the freeway. Oops. See, I Opal caught it on film. Thank you. That was Opal saying thank you. You said it. Like, she totally has a personality. She's like, thank you, we made it. I freaking love this van. Because sometimes that, that, uh, that light will just come on and uh, it won't even ding. But that time it dinged. Um, and uh, that's her talking to us. Yeah, <laughs> she definitely said thank you. And if you guys are curious, uh, that's our gas mileage right now. We're getting 18.7 miles per gallon. And we're pulling passes. Um, like we just, we, that's going over Snoqualmie Pass and uh, Lookout Pass, and now we're pulling uh, some other pass. I don't know the name of it. Yeah. She's a 2007 Chrysler Town and Country, so she's she's an older gal. Hey, don't tell people her age. <laughs> Sorry, Opal. Montana sure is beautiful. Looks like snow over there. A big dark cloud. Hopefully we ain't going that way. The best of Montana. Anaconda. So from I-90 you can see this large smokestack here. And that is the old copper town of Anaconda. I saw this on the way to the beet harvest last year, and uh, I think we're gonna go check it out. We are 12 miles from it, and it still looks pretty big. It was the late 1800s and rich copper ore was discovered in nearby Butte, Montana. This brought Marcus Daly up from, uh, he was an Irishman, but he was working down in Salt Lake City for the Salt Lake City Mining Company. He came up here to start a smelting operation here in this town that was founded at the same time, Anaconda, Montana.
This is uh, one of the ore buckets. <laughs> I can literally stand up in here. Copper staining still on this. That's copper staining. There's copper staining right there too. And a little bit of copper staining on the bottom of it. They ended up building an it was somewhere around 150 days. The tallest still standing masonry structure in the world. This smokestack is 585 feet tall, which is, I, to put that into perspective, the Washington Monument is 555 feet tall. At the park, there's a visual representation of the actual size. At its base, where you see the hexagonal shape, that is 93 feet in diameter. Then it tapers at the top to 70 feet in diameter. The bricks used in building this are larger than normal bricks. It summed up over two million bricks to build it. If you can imagine. But what an incredible feat that must have been. They completed it in uh, November of 1918. Unfortunately, we can't get up close to the smokestack because of lead and arsenic and the potential for falling bricks on your head from 500 feet would instantly kill you. So that's the viewing point. So that's the best view you can get of it. Um, tried to fly my drone there, but the batteries were pretty dead from being in the cold. I had to actually warm the battery up in my armpit in order to get it to take off. And I could only make it about halfway there before I got a low battery warning. All right, uh, on to the next adventure. That, that also was not our big stop for the day. We've got more in store for you. It's, it's a surprise. <laughs> Well, that was fun. That was so much fun. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon and we'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye now. Babe, if you don't add a sound of Opal going gulp, 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 gulp over uh, the B-roll of you pumping gas, I'm going to be sorely disappointed. So unfortunately, you can't get to the smokestack because uh, the anaconda don't want none unless you got buns on. <laughs> <laughs>